Hey everyone, welcome back to the Niche Pursuits podcast. The Google spam update for March of 2024 has just finished. And today we're going to talk about the winners and the losers of this update. So we're going to show examples, some sites that have seen a huge spike in traffic and some sites that got hit a lot. And we can probably attribute that to the spam update. Now, of course, we also have the Google Core update that is continuing to roll out. And so we're going to talk about some of the nuances there. And then we've got a couple of other big news items, including the fact that Google has just replaced the head of search with a new person. And so we're going to dive into what all of that means, maybe how that might impact you and your website portfolio. Uh, but of course, I've got Jared to talk about with me. Jared, how are you doing today? Doing great. I mean, the news is big, but we've got some fun side hustle and weird niches to talk about too. We do as well. So we're going to try and get through this news, really dive deep on it, but we're going to share some results uh, for my Amazon influencer account and, and a side hustle you're working on. Uh, and then a couple of weird niche sites that definitely I think people are going to want to stick around for. Um, as usual, I don't look at what niche site you have until like I... <laughs> pull it up on the screen, but I just happened to read one of the headlines and uh, it made me chuckle. It's um, odd. It's, it, it fits weird, doesn't it? It fits weird. So if people <laughs> want a good laugh, uh, stick around for Jared's weird niche site because uh, it's a good one. Uh, I think we're going to enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, and uh, I'll just tease that that my site that I have pulled up, just like maybe put your shades on, your blinders on, like it, the site comes at you. You know, I it's, haven't it's seen all it yet. I, I, this will be so one of those I probably, see for the first time. Yeah, just be ready for that. Before we jump into the podcast, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. We got tranny links and placements on massive websites such as The Express, Mirror, Daily Record and many more with a campaign about the pros and cons of popular diets. Mm, not bad. This is exactly how we've done it. Our client is a very popular fitness client. We have asked them to provide thorough expert commentary about the pros and cons of the most popular diets. Once we have this information, we put this in a nice email and send it out to 15,000, yes, 15,000 journalists from around the world that write about fitness. So good. And all healthy. Big publications picked up our story from the email, giving our client massive, juicy, saucy, healthy links that are 100% relevant to their website and that will keep the rankings of the website in a great shape. You see what I've done there? I hope this case study inspires and that you will start leveraging expert commentary type campaigns to land links to your or your client's website, just like we've done it with this campaign. If you want similar link building PR campaigns for your website, head to search-intelligence dot co dot uk and get in touch with them now um okay so let's jump into the big uh story of the day um google has just finished rolling out the spam update uh it just finished and so let me share my screen here um I've got so many screen uh, I was gonna tabs. Say you, Here we go. <laughs> you have winners um, and losers in other tabs, which I'm looking forward to seeing as well. I, I do. So uh, the March 2024 spam update is finished. And this was just uh, yesterday that it completed. It took 15 days to complete. Um, however, as usual, Google likes to do a lot of things all at once. And the core update is still going on. And that's going to take another two weeks roughly uh, to finish rolling out. So there still is updates going on, but the spam update finished. And that included three things. Uh, the spam update included a scaled content abuse. This could be AI generated content, programmatic content, or even human assisted content. So it just, it, it targeted specifically though this massive scaled content abuse, uh, expired domain abuse. And this is a really interesting one because a lot of people uh, have used expired domains to get that authority from old websites. And 
the wrong way to do it that probably Google was targeting is if you had a, uh, an expired domain on one topic and then you completely shifted the topic and tried to rank keywords that were unrelated to the or original uh, website, that, that would probably be considered expired domain abuse. Uh, and then the third one was site reputation abuse and otherwise known as parasite SEO. And this is still, uh, this hasn't happened yet. This is going to happen. They're going to take action on it uh, May, first week of May, if I recall correctly. Uh, so even though the spam update is completed, they're not actually going to enforce this third piece of it, this site reputation abuse until early May. Did I get all of that right? Oh, man. I mean, I feel like we could just end the podcast now, call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. A lot going on here. As a reminder, like Google swears, uh, continues to double down on the fact they try not to uh, launch uh, updates at the same time, uh, but pretty much that's all they do now. So it's very difficult, and we'll try, but it's very difficult to see through what the spam update affected that is clear and obviously different than what the core eight, core update, which is currently rolling out, is also affecting. So it's very difficult. And then there's many facets to the spam update this time because they updated their spam policies with all the things you just went through. Right. And a, a big piece of that policies that we talked about last week was that uh, even though some sites weren't hit right away with the spam update, they did update their policies. So they started taking manual actions. And so we talked about a ton of sites that are actually getting de-indexed that had been de-indexed um, manually, right? Instead of algorithmically. And uh, you pointed out previous uh, to us hitting record that some of those sites, and we can mention Jackie Chow by name because he's been public with this, that a, a lot of his sites were de-indexed. He got those manual actions, uh, but just, I believe either today or yesterday, he shared that he's been getting some of those re-indexed. He, he submitted a reconsideration request uh, and at least I, I don't know how many of his sites were re-indexed. I know yeah. it wasn't all of them, but at least one or two have come back. So that that's just kind of an interesting footnote uh, to all of this happening right now. And again, even this article you have up on screen towards the bottom says that the manual actions were not related to the spam update, but they happened on day one of the spam update. And the wording that was provided to those people whose sites were de-indexed was... AI spam or spam of some sort. So right. I do think it was related, you know, I'm not sure that matters whether it was or wasn't related, yeah. but it's, it I is think related. It's kind of it has to be. semantics, right? I, it, it, it didn't, uh, it wasn't algorithmically done Correct. by the spam update, yep. but the spam update changed their policies. And so they manually took action. That That's how I see it. And we discussed um, it a lot last week. Like yeah. why does Google need to manually de-index anything if they've improved their spam uh, filtering Algorithm, and right. launched a filter to deal with that. So, um, I, I, it's very weird because a lot, there's been a lot of sites that have been hit and impacted by the last two weeks of updates. And, but a lot of them would not be able to check the box of using scaled content abuse. A lot right. of them are not built on a, a, an expired domain period, let alone an irrelevant expired domain. So it still feels like we're seeing effects of the core update happening simultaneously next to some of the more, I guess, uh, punitive results from what would be a spam update uh, on a website, right? Yes, exactly. And uh, I have to give a shout out to uh, Lily Ray uh, because she actually shared a couple of screenshots of winners and losers in, so far with these updates. And so I'm going to share this because I thought it would be really interesting to go through and look at specific examples of sites that have seen a big traffic increase or a big traffic decrease just over the last couple of weeks while this spam update and the core update have been going on. And so uh, you should be able to see um, this first screenshot. Uh, this first image is the absolute winners in terms of traffic. So think about traffic size. So we're going to see a lot of really large websites. So even though percentage wise, maybe the traffic didn't change a lot, uh, the, the amount of traffic, right? If Amazon gets another million visitors a day, it's like a blip, right? Um, <laughs> compared to other sites, it's like, you know, monumental. Um, so that's what this is, is showing uh, you know, in the green, you can see, for example, Amazon.com. Uh, maybe I won't read these, but the second image 
uh, is interesting because it does show the percentage change, right? Uh, so sites like three uh, free mp3 dot tube it percentage change 999 percent increase like it's just through the roof right thousand percent increase uh, and then the other side of this we got azanimals.com <laughs> down 78 percent so it took a huge huge hit um, and so these couple of screenshots uh, she shared this uh, two days ago. So I wanted to see what the current state of some of these were. Uh, and so I went through, and if it's okay with you, Jared, um, I just thought I'd go through and share some of these uh, websites, how they look currently in Ahrefs. Yeah, I see some sites on there that I recognize and know very well. I'm curious to see what some of these look like in Ahrefs. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, you know, <clears throat> I tried to pull up some sites that I thought might just be your more typical content websites, and then I mixed in a few others. Uh, so dogster.com, yep. you know, down 248% up. Um, or up, up 248%. Yep. Thank those you. those listening. <laughs> yes. Um, so here we go. And it appears to be accurate. I mean, look at this graph. Um, it definitely appears that when the March core update, the spam update started, they they are getting a huge windfall of traffic and so i have not personally analyzed why um but if somebody wanted to go see okay what's the type of site that's doing really well uh in this update right they could come over here to uh, dogster they could take a look and see maybe what they're doing do some deep dive analysis so i think that this is just a you know a great example okay uh a second example, because I've got so many uh, here, is uh, free mp3 dot tube. Um, I didn't pull up the website, right? Because I assume it's just a bunch of mp3 type stuff. Um, it's very volatile, very yeah, volatile, look at that. and uh, new. But yeah, I mean it. It uh, you're right. You're right. It does look like it wasn't getting it really any traffic until about a year ago, maybe uh, three months ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm back to November 2023, I think. Oh, you're right. That is only like four months. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Um, yeah, super and so, new. Super new. So, again, that's a site that maybe people can analyze. It's volatile, but going from like nothing to a couple hundred thousand organic visitors a month. Yeah. Hey, something's going on there. Um, okay, the next one that just, I mean, it sounded uh, very much like a content website. Um, and maybe I'll pull this one up, but uh, for, <clears throat> for vehicle accessories.com definitely has seen this big spike, but now has started to decline. So will this last? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, right? Because we only see uh, the daily traffic. Um, if I share uh, the website, um, it looks like it's an actual shop where you can buy the accessories uh, for your truck. Um, but for whatever reason, it's doing well either in the spam or the core uh, update. So classic e-com store in this case. Yes, exactly. Um, another one that uh, Lily Ray shared here was that uh, vocabulary.com is seeing a big increase, which is kind of surprising to me when you think about SGE, you think about um, the ability to get definitions quite readily in Google, um, but they're seeing a massive increase and, in traffic. And dictionary-related sites took a huge hit last year, so they might be regaining some of those uh, that visibility that they gave up last year. And I did see on the um, the gains picture or image that you posted, there were a bunch of them. I think dictionary.com was also in the winners group. Yeah, I believe that it was. Um, I think this one was actually the next one. Um, Merriam Webster. There you go. Was posted as a loser, which you can see that it is declining right here at the very end. But that's coming off a bunch was. of gains that they've got in the it's last coming, couple of months. Exactly. A year. Yeah, look at that. So it's actually done pretty well. So um, maybe it's lot a lot lost a lot of traffic uh, overall, but percentage wise, it's very small. If that makes sense, right? It's you know, a peak of about 75 million and now it's down to 72 million. So it's lost 3 million organic visitors a month, potentially. 
but a it's a very very much a just a, a small blip on uh, i'd take some scale. of that I'd yeah of that yeah traffic. i'd be happy to have uh some of that traffic myself wouldn't we, wouldn't we all right now <laughs> now one of these that i was let me see if i can pull up yeah let's go back to lily ray's image here uh over here reddit reddit.com it showed an absolute change of down 70 uh i don't know if this percent what it what exactly um, the unit of measurement is. So I was like, oh, let's pull up Reddit just finally. to you know, sort of verify. Is Reddit finally getting hammered? Well, it does not appear that that's the case. Uh, it, it shows that, in fact, they're getting an uptick. It's increasing a little bit more. You know, it'd probably be easier if, on some of these. Yep. You know, um, it's definitely getting an increase in traffic here over the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, I, I saw a different chart where they went down a little bit and then a week later we're, we're rising again. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no big change for Reddit. Google still loves Reddit. How about Forbes? Um, Forbes, I'm not seeing a big change. They're still doing really well, uh, in Google. Um, and then supposedly Wikipedia was a big, um, loser, but that is not the case. Uh, Wikipedia is still doing, okay, well, maybe, maybe I lied. There is a, uh, you know, yeah, but that was they back are trending down. That was a while ago. You're right. You're right. That was the yep. turn of the year. Yeah. So here are the last couple of weeks. They've been pretty flat, pretty steady. Um, okay. Now there are a couple that I would say are more in the wheelhouse of just straight content sites, a dash Z dash animals, boy, oh boy, they have just fallen Whew. off a cliff. Wow. Um, so this would be one that would be worth analyzing, uh, to figure, I mean, lost 1.2 million organic visitors in traffic, um, and probably more than that right over the last couple of weeks um i'm on their there. website and then yep. the top article on the home page the latest article uh not saying this is indicative of the whole site but spencer tell me what you up with all you've learned over the last six months or so of hcu and all this number most recent article is 25 plants that start with f <laughs> is that right that's right i mean again this is on an animal website that's right uh, so might be a little bit broad, right? Some of their topics. Um, and so, yeah, this would be one that would be worth sort of analyzing like Jared just pulled out, you know, are there some strategies or things they've done that maybe wasn't uh, the best idea? 10 States with terrible March weather and when to visit instead. Where are you seeing all these? I'm on scroll the down the homepage. Here. Oh, there you go. 10 states with terrible March weather. The nine most common languages, uh, spoken, languages in spoken in Belgium. Wow. Mm -hmm. Watch this massive landslide. Obviously, it has a lot to do with animals. Move faster than water. Interesting. So, yeah, they, you know, they should probably get rid of the animal content. Um, <laughs> I wonder if that's some of the huge, huge gains uh, that they've, they've had. Yeah, I don't want to spend it's, it's, too much time on this, but I was going to say we could probably just sit here all day and do this. And I wasn't intending to do that for the record, Spencer. So sorry if I'm hijacking. No, but I no, just couldn't help good. it. I had it pulled up when I saw that chart of the massive hit it took. I mean, if you guys are listening and not watching, it took what'd you say, fifty five percent or something, like a huge dive. And oh, so yeah, I just couldn't help but pull up the homepage, and I feel like there's problems that already scream at me from just looking at it for ten seconds at the homepage. Yeah. So um, I was. Uh, you know, kind of looking at some of the um, keywords that maybe have changed, right, recently and seeing if there's any patterns there. But that might be something that people can dive in their animals that start with why. Does um, it snow in Texas? Does it snow in Texas? Well, they lost that. They lost that. You know, they no longer and this is a challenge because thing. I'm not saying this is why it is. I'd want to look at it more. But oftentimes when you go too broad, you don't just give up that traffic. You end up hurting the whole site sometimes. Mm -hmm. So again, not exactly. saying that's what's happening, but not sure Bermuda grass and Texas weather and Belgian languages has a lot to do with what they really established themselves under. 
So maybe I'll just share two final sites and then we'll move on from this just to show some other losers that are showing up right now. Uh, thegamer.com does appear to have taken a big hit here Ooh, yeah. uh, in traffic, right? Almost down about a million visitors a month, something like that. Um, so that's one that, again, these are high authority, you know, high DR websites that are getting hit with uh, what appears to be a combination of either the spam update or the core update. We don't know exactly which one. Uh, and then another one, sticking with the grammar theme, vocabulary, uh, uh, grammarist.com is down quite a bit uh, as well. They're down probably almost 50% wow. uh, of traffic here just over the last uh, week or so, a couple of weeks since the March core update. So again, high DR site that's getting hit might be worth looking at, trying to recognize some patterns. This is what I would do if my site had been hit. Um, I would look at all these sites and kind of figure out, are there any recognizable patterns, um, things that we might be able to do to improve. So so there you have it. There's some big winners and some big losers. Uh, the spam update is just finished. And uh, so keep your eye out on your site. The core update is still happening. Uh, and of course, we'll be sharing more uh, next week as well as it relates to all of this. Uh, but that I would say is the biggest news. Well, depends on which circles you run in, I guess, Jared, uh, the, probably the wall street journal, uh, you know, homepage article would be that, well, Google is, has changed who the head of search is. Uh, they, they just announced that, uh, they've replaced, um, the former several, head of search. Yes. Yeah, several actual. Uh, actually, several uh, people got, got shuffled around and changed places, not just one. There you go. So we've got um, yeah, Google promotes Liz Reed to the head of search. Um, and then I'm probably not going to get the name right, but people can read this here. Uh, Chino Vekatari. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is re replacing Pandu Nayak as the lead of search quality and ranking. Kathy Edwards is moving to the long-term bets uh, team. So there is, there's quite a bit of shakeup, right? There's at least a few people here that um, are getting directly involved with search um, and search quality. Do you read anything into this, Jared? I mean, I'm really speculating, but I am here in the news. I'll read one thing, perhaps. I mean, Reed, Liz Reed has, has had a good track record with Google. Um, uh, and, and so I'll read one line out of this Search Engine Land article and uh, tell me if I'm overstepping. Probably a bit. Probably reading into a bit too much, but let's read into it. Uh, Reed joined Google in 2003, so over 20 years ago, right? She's credited as one of the earliest pioneers of Google Maps and local search and helped Google redefine modern-day map making with AI. Mm. So we know that SGE is, hasn't gone anywhere yet out of beta, right? It certainly was supposed to be out of beta at the end of 2023. We've heard the CEO of uh, Google talk about how that is the future. They're all in on it. And now someone gets promoted who seems to have a background in revolutionizing other parts of Google with AI. Very interesting. Uh, astute observation. Um, it's the best I got. No, that's very good. This search engine roundtable, um, this article I'm pulling up now, it's generally the same. The reason I pull it up because it gave the entire quote from LinkedIn. I mean, I could just go over to LinkedIn and she posted on LinkedIn. I guess maybe I will. Um, she posted on LinkedIn and, and people can read this entire thing, but she does specifically mention uh, SGE. Let's see if I can find this. Um, okay. She's talking about improving search. Earlier this month, we updated our spam policies and ranking systems to improve quality significantly. So uh, she mentions the spam update there. Um, we're helping people search in entirely new ways, whether that's searching what they see with lens or what they scribble with circle to search. And we're piloting AI powered overviews with search generative experience, SGE. In fact, people have already issued billions of queries with SGE since we introduced it as a feature in search labs last year. We've had incredibly positive feedback on the combination of quick answers and the ability to dive deeper on the web with SGE. We're able to serve a wider range of information needs and answer new types of questions, including more complex questions like comparisons are no longer 
or longer queries. More coming soon. Mm, okay. Looks like I wasn't that off base with my conjecture. No, Look at how much time were, she dedicated. I hadn't seen this. Yeah. Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think, um, you know, if you look at this, it's, you know, if I were to highlight the amount of time that she spent talking yeah. about AI Almost and SGE, 50%. right. You know, it, I don't know exactly, but yeah, almost 50% of her announcement of like this massive role of, Hey, I'm now the head of search. What does she talk about? AI, SGE, the future of search. So she certainly sees that as the future of search. Um, so maybe that's why she was brought in, right? Because she has this huge background. Maybe they made a shakeup because there has been a lot of noise being made about the quality of search. A lot of people, both publicly and privately as SEOs, have been complaining that search quality is going down year after year. And part of it maybe is PR of like, okay, we need to replace yeah. the, the head of uh, somebody at search. And uh, Liz Reed has a great background in not only Google, but in AI. And that ties into the messaging overall that I think Google is trying to promote here. I mean, they've been, there, there have been, quite, there's been quite a bit of noise around even um, Sundar Pinchai's job. Uh, and and so perhaps to, you know, th this could be a move to, like you said, kind of help alleviate some of the pressure on him and show change specifically to a board and to shareholders as it relates to, you know, a lot of, uh, areas of Google that haven't gone um, to plan so far in the last year. Or yeah, two. you know it's it's all speculation. But totally. anytime a major corporation changes, was it at least three people there um, that were involved in search yeah. and and leading search? The product of Google. I mean, maybe their ads product is really where they make their money, but search is really their product. Um, I would say search deal. is the vehicle, and the ads are the product. So yeah, you know, hand in hand. Exactly. And um, so anytime that happens, you know, there's a lot that's been going on behind the scenes, a lot of discussions in the boardroom, in, you know, private meetings with the CEO um, to make a big shakeup like this. Uh, it, it will be interesting to see if there's any follow up journalism from the New York Times and Wall Street journals of the world to see why was this change made? Um, but we can only speculate. And my sort of boots on the ground analysis is that, you know, there's there's been a lot of uh, heat that Google has been taking about the quality of search over time. And it's certainly getting louder and louder from website creators and bloggers because their very livelihoods have been taken away because of potentially the poor quality of search. Um, other websites that are ranking when the creators themselves, you know, are no longer ranking. So I'll get off my soapbox and uh, leave it at that. Pure speculation. Yeah. I mean, but that's what we're supposed to do here, right? I mean, you know, it's a little bit. We, this, this is our soapbox, Spencer. It is indeed. It is indeed. Um... Hey, everyone. Spencer here, founder of Niche Pursuits. So you probably know the importance of building internal links so your site can perform well in Google. Today, I want to share how Link Whisper can help you add outbound internal links to your articles. As you draft your article in WordPress, Link Whisper scans your site, identifying the best internal link opportunities. It then recommends the perfect anchor text and link to add. With just a click, your content is updated with new internal links. No more expensive tools or tedious manual site searches. Link Whisper does the heavy lifting right inside the WordPress editor. Say goodbye to the hassle of internal linking. With Link Whisper, you can focus on what you do best, creating great content. Use the coupon code PODCAST today and get $15 off. Elevate your website's internal linking with Link Whisper now. Building smart internal links just got easier. Go to linkwhisper.com today and be sure to use coupon code PODCAST to get $15 off. We we have um, other news items potentially, but I don't know that they're really uh, big or earth shattering. So maybe we will just move on to our side hustles and our weird niche sites. Um, I feel like um, you know when they're like uh, CNN's covering like a crisis. It's like day three of the blah blah blah. I feel like we're on like week three of the Google Core update. <laughs> right. So we're going to continue covering this stuff until it's likely end in another 
two-ish weeks or a little less. And then obviously we'll deal with some of the, the fallout and the, the, the actual winners and losers. So we'll, we're going to be talking about this for a couple more weeks to come, but new information comes out every week. And, and it, it just, it, like you said, it filled the, the whole news uh, segment this week was, was basically all stuff around Google and it's, it's updates that are happening right now. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So just, uh, you know, maybe on a lighter mood here, uh, I thought I'd jump in and share uh, a project that I've been working on and talking about on the podcast now for over a year. And, you know, Jared, it's actually worth a shout out that it's officially been one year since we started this news uh, podcast. I don't have a cool mug like you, but uh, there no, you I go. wouldn't call this cool. Cheers. But it's a mug. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it was March of 2023 when we started doing this every week and we have not missed a week. Uh, so that's, you know, at least 52 episodes, I guess, uh, that, that we've done covering the news. And we've been talking about our side projects and weird niche sites the entire time. And one of the very first things that maybe the very first thing that I Hold talked on, about Spencer, was before you move on, can I tell the funniest story of the last mm. year? We didn't Maybe. go there ahead of time. You have no idea what I'm no, about to say. I don't. I'm we almost missed an episode. I'm driving yes. to a, and you might remember watching this episode for those of you who've watched all the news podcasts and seen me at a very awkward location. I'm driving off the grid to a family trip and Spencer messages me as I'm driving the family, the family up the, uh, up the, the 395 to the mountains and says, and I don't remember exactly what happened, but basically the recording that we did for that week didn't work. Mm -mm. And you're, you're like, well, you're gone and I don't really want to do it by myself. So forget the whole thing. Yep. And I was, I was like, like, well, throwing the towel. I got an hour before it starts snowing. Once we arrive at the cabin, what do you think we crank it out again? And we did part two and um, we almost missed a week. And that was my, that, I think that's the funniest story. My connection wasn't great, but you know what? We, we, we stuck to it. We did, we did one every week for the whole year. We did. Um, I will just say that I, after doing that episode, I went out and bought a new router. I was having technical problems on my end, which is what caused us to lose the episode the first time. And you were out of town having, you know, but we did it. That was a, that was a rough week, but we have been consistent. And uh, so here's to another year of news episodes. Um, but so on with the show. All of that to say, I've been talking about the Amazon Influencer Program for a year now on these episodes, and uh, I thought I'd give another update. Um, I am still at about $1,600 in earnings over the last 30 days. Uh, the last couple of days, I am seeing a small uptick. Uh, my videos are now making about 70 ish dollars a day which if you do the math right that's a little over two thousand per over, month yeah. so it's it's a little bit better than the 1600 a month um so hopefully you know i'm i'm hopeful that the end of march and and april with spring coming in a lot of those products will start picking up that perhaps were outdoor products that people weren't buying before um it it is just really fascinating to see that even though i haven't been publishing any videos now really since gosh early december um, at least regularly, uh, I'm, I'm still able to earn this amount of money. And um, it's, it's become much more passive at this point where it, this is the first really full year I've done this. And so I don't know how long a video will stay up where people can watch it, uh, where I'll get clicks from it and earn commissions. I have no idea. I mean, is it going to stay up there for two years, three years? Is it going to all die next month? I really don't know, but that's what I'm doing here is, is just sharing uh, what I've been working on. So Amazon Influencer, still working, still earning from all that work that I did last year. And as a um, sort of announcement or just to remind people, uh, Jared, just about an hour and a half ago, we finished recording a call with the Niche Pursuits community where you were the guest on and you talked about your Amazon Influencer account, your journey, your process, everything. And uh, that was a members only call for the Niche Pursuits community. Uh, but of course, we recorded that. We're uploading that tonight. Uh, so tomorrow people can see that in the Niche Pursuits community uh, members area. So if people do want to join the Niche Pursuits community, they can just go to community.nichepursuits.com. Pretty easy. Community.nichepursuits.com or Google it. It'll show up. Uh, you can uh, go there, join the community. You'll get access to 
the call that I did a week ago about my Amazon influencer account. I showed my back end, my earnings, my process for hiring people to do videos. You'll see Jared's video. And uh, I will simply say that we have a stellar guest list scheduled for the coming weeks to talk about Google Discover, you know, all the issues facing publishers online and a lot of other good things coming. So uh, if people want to join that and interact with the community on Discord, get in a private mastermind group, we're getting all of that set up over at the community. So that's my um, update on my side project. Uh, Jared, what are you working on these days? Well, uh, Influencer is also doing very well for me. I didn't yeah. to talk about it. I will give an update in a future podcast episode with a little bit more detail, but it's also going well for me. And just to circle back on that, like I think one of the big things you and I talked about last year consistently is that we really had no idea the how passive this was going to turn out to be. Like we didn't even know if the videos we upload in the summer would even still be there in the winter, right? Or vice right. versa. But you're seeing evidence, I'm seeing evidence, like it truly is. Like I'm seeing videos that I published the first week I was on the program earning income right now. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. um, and so it, you know, how long we we don't know. We're still throwing our hands up, but I'm nine months in, you're over a year in, and we're still seeing the effects that this could really actually be a pretty passive project for people. So, you know, encouraging. Absolutely. I think it is encouraging. So I love it. Well, um, we're talking today about actually uh, uh, having less followers on a certain account of mine, not more. <laughs> now, mm. this doesn't fall into the bucket of failing, at least not in my opinion, although I've shared a few of those of late. Um, uh, oh, one quick update, though. Uh, uh, I did publish a YouTube video last week on this day. It, uh, one week in, it's my best performing video, and my earnings have gone up quite a bit on YouTube. Nice. But I still haven't made a hundred bucks yet. Mm, okay. Well. So I'm earning more than three dollars and fifty cents a week now. I think I made about seventy dollars in the last seven days based on the views of this video doing well. But it it's okay. still, you know. Hey. Don't quit your day job on. Anyways, I digress. But uh we were talking about how bad that account is monetizing at this point. But what I want to talk about today is actually something that I, I wonder if a lot of people think about much. Um, in the past week, we deleted roughly 20% of our email subscribers to the weekend growth newsletter. That's a bold move. <laughs> so I've been, uh, Caitlin and I, uh, and my, my company tool and creative, but really for almost 15 years, Caitlin and I have been managing large accounts in email marketing. And it's a very pretty standard best practice that you need to be routinely culling your list. But I found a lot of people that are in our space don't necessarily, I'm not blanket statement with this, but a lot of people don't pay attention to culling their list. So I just thought to kind of outline the process I went through. Uh, your reaction, Spencer, is pretty common with the people I talk to, like, what the heck are you doing? And I'm like, what, what do you mean? You're not doing this? But I, I, I forget. So I thought I'd walk everybody through the process we went through. Um, basically, we've had the Weekend Growth Newsletter for about a year now, actually just over a year now. And it was get it was about, to about 5,000 email subscribers and uh, it's grown over the year um, and uh, I wanted to see the health of the list because over time as you grow your newsletter typically your open rates will start to decline a bit and this can all you know the engagement the open rate this can all affect your deliverability so we basically went at it with the criteria of looking at leads who had been in the system for at least three months but had not opened an email in the last 60 days and your criteria might be more on clicks but for me, I usually put all the information in the emails. I don't get a ton of clicks anyways. It's all about the open rate for me. So I looked at somebody who hadn't opened an email in the last 60 days. I publish at least once a week. So that's at least, at least, what is that? Eight emails, probably nine emails they haven't opened in a row. 944 people, so about 20% of the list qualified for this. Um, we sent two emails to try to re-engage them, basically saying, hey, come back or else we're kicking you off the list, you know, but in a little bit nicer of a way. 63 people re-engaged, so 7% of that group. And so um, earlier in the week, we deleted 881 people from our email list for a total of 18% gone. Now, what are the results? Well, the open rate on last week's email, the, 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 the mass email I sent out, the broad email I sent out was 37.8%. Open rate on this week's email, 51.2%. Wow. Wow. Very nice. So again, um, you know, not exactly side hustle, uh, 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 you know, success, but 
uh, I found as I shared that this week and a lot of people looked at me in disbelief. I was like, you know, that could be a cool topic to share with people as you're growing. If maybe you're still in the early days of growing your email newsletter list. Maybe you're heavy in on it. But um, I would say that calling a, a list of people, I mean, these are people who haven't opened an email in two months. They've been on my list for quite a while and they were given two opportunities that basically said, hey, uh, you know, maybe you got busy or whatever, but, you know, I, just click this button to stay on our list and you can keep just getting our emails. And, and, and they didn't even do that. So, you know, these are people who pretty much were unengaged by all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. And, um, you know, I, I think you're probably doing it, uh, the right way. I mean, that's in, in terms of industry knowledge, right? This is a uh, pretty much standard practice to go through. And if people aren't engaged, uh, with your emails, it makes sense not to just have this bloated list if less and less people are opening up your emails, right? That can trigger certain things with Google or other ESPs, right? That, um, hey, this guy's sending spam because nobody interacts with his emails. So it does make sense. You want to make sure that you have a healthy list. Now, I do things slightly different and it's not better probably. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I'm all ears. But I but I have what I call an active email list. So people that have opened in the last 90 days is what, and ConvertKit kind of does this for you, yep. right? Um, and then I have my inactive list that I just, I can't get myself to delete. I just, I hold on to them and every once in a while I email everybody, you know, on that list. And, you know, I get a few people that open and they make it back over to the active list. But this comes at a cost. Right. to me because now it costs my monthly bill is this much higher because I have all these really inactive subscribers that just because I can't give them up, I'm paying extra money. Uh, and that's so actually I'm not what triggered this is I hadn't done it yet. And Caitlin was like, Hey, we're coming up on 5,000 subs and that's going to trigger us into a, a new level of convert kit that I think was almost double what we're paying Not the end of the world. But when you start, you are like, I got to pay double what I'm paying right now mm -hmm. to keep a bunch of dead weight on my list. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's give yeah. a chance, but if I don't want to pay for people who don't want to even listen to me. For sure. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, take take it for what it is, people listening. You know, I just, uh, I have a hard time deleting. And so I'm You're paying money. You're a nicer guy than me, Spencer. To, <laughs> well, I don't you know. I, uh, I'm more ruthless. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> ruthless. You're ruthless. Uh, just delete. Right. Um, anyways, very cool. I mean, to go from a 37% open rate to a 51% open rate, like that's, that's amazing. I, I, yeah, I, I don't think this is a, a massively important. I think it's more important, the more dead weight you're carrying. I think it's more like, I think generally speaking, uh, by, by large media standards, by the type of data that say a Google would look at or email providers, like, a 37.8%, a 51.2%. Those are both very engaged lists, no matter which yeah. way you look at it. Yeah. You know, like large companies, they send out emails and they can get 2% open rates and be okay with that, you know, when they're a group on or something like that. Yeah. Um, and true. so, you know, I don't think there's a lot of problems, but I have gotten a couple emails in the last couple of weeks for the first time saying, Hey, Jared, like your emails never used to end up in the promotions tab, and now they are. You're, you know, it's just little indicators you can pay attention to. This isn't a course yep. on that, it's a lot of in depth stuff. Uh, on that, I don't even know half of it, but you know, in general, just list health. Yep, very important, absolutely. So, well, very good. We uh, teased a couple of weird niche sites earlier in the episode, and it's time to get to those. Uh, so, I, um, I have mine uh, again. Warning, you know, ahead of time. Be ready. You know, oh, I don't want to blind grief. anyone. I just uh, opened with, it. <laughs> with what's coming out oh, i tried i tried to warn you um this this uh I, I will just make a blanket statement that i think for about the next year uh all of these suggestions for weird niche sites have come from the audience i put out a tweet and a facebook message and i got about 50 weird niche sites that i can be sharing um going forward and so uh <laughs> Oh, uh, I just looked at this again. So the weird niche site that I will be sharing is lingscars.com. And here it is in all of its glory. Wow. And when you say all, you mean all. All of it. I mean, you got the psychedelic wallpaper in the background. You've got uh, Ling, I guess. His head is 
sort of bobbling. And anyways, if you don't see it, it's, uh, I mean, it, it, it kind of harkens like, Hey, this was built in like the nineties. Uh, but you can also tell it's a modern site because that was a yeah. lot of interesting, uh, things going on. Um, but what, I mean, the, the, the thing that makes it weird obviously is the way it looks. I mean, it just, it looks hideous, uh, for lack of a better, uh, term, but it's just a car leasing website. You can see which cars are available to lease. Um, but this site truly leans into being like this crazy website. So right here on the homepage, the first thing they say is the UK's craziest car leasing website. And they just, they really lean into this weirdness, into this loudness of design, if you will. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember where I got uh, the pictures but uh they they do some interesting um maybe it's under fun stuff here we go yeah 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 under the fun stuff they've got ling's nuclear missile truck and this appears to be an actual thing uh they have this giant <laughs> missile on a truck that says ling's cars and they park it it looks like on the side of the highway they have a few pictures here so they do these interesting marketing um things uh and that kind of goes right along with their website. Hey, we're loud, we're brash, we're UK's craziest car lease website. Um, come get your used car here. Um, but uh, it, anyways, we could poke around the website a lot. Um, it doesn't get a lot of organic traffic. <laughs> it doesn't look like their SEO game is really you know top notch. However, uh, According to similar web, they actually do get quite a bit of traffic. Um, a lot of it's direct and social. And uh, it shows that last month, at least, they got 84,000 visitors uh, to their website, which is, is quite a bit. Some of it, I think, is suspect traffic. I mean, 23% of it's coming from Russia, right? And if they're a UK website, I, maybe all the Russian... <laughs> traffic um isn't that valuable same with the us i i don't know i mean they just want their local traffic which fortunately still is 15 percent of that traffic so um but we could go through here and uh you know click on karaoke madness i didn't click on that one um, i'm right now on the uh key information tab and the dragon's den and apparently Ling was uh, wrote a chapter in a BBC book on. Is uh, that right? A lesson in sales and marketing. Ling Valentine and Ling'sCars dot com. Wow! And you can download the chapter of the book, or you can buy the book on Amazon. And she has an excerpt from it. Uh, so I mean. Uh, it, 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 I'll just read this quote. I didn't, you know, I live, I live inside my website, says Ling. It is everything to me. I really wanted the most thought-provoking, useful, and entertaining car website in the UK. Being from China, freedom of speech is important to me. So I went out of my way to tell the truth to customers out the waffle. Uh, you know, I employed the same device that John and I used when I was in Finland, instant web chat. I made it a rule from day one that customers could talk to me live on the website, and this is an extremely popular feature. Interesting. Um, and, you know, I could go on, but clearly uh, there's a bit of motive behind this crazy website that we're looking at. Yeah. And I went ahead and closed it. Uh, it was having trouble loading or something it looked like. So uh, I went ahead and closed that. But I mean, that's one marketing strategy, right, is to just go all in on the craziness of your website, the crazy design or uh, angle that you might bring to Ooh. a traditional business. Okay, I have some things I can share here. Okay. Uh, I'm, again, I didn't study this, but uh, this is what it's saying here. Uh, Richard obtained some information about the function of the website and discovered that Ling takes commission from the car dealers. I've got to say, congratulations. He said, the profit is quite low, but the turnover is fantastic. Um, discerning that in 2006, she was making a monthly gross profit of 10,000 pounds per month. Um, Ling explained a little uncertainty. A little uncertainly. My net profit in 2005 is 70,000 pounds. I left 
it in the business in 2006. I used 25,000 for marketing. Um, it goes on to talk about how much she makes. So it actually talks about how much she makes with this business model here as being kind of a broker. And, 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 you know, we talk a lot about monetization on the, on this website, sorry, on this podcast, but you know, it's actually, uh, goes into detail enough that I should have maybe reviewed it before reading it. But yeah, so there's a profit at one point of the site. Well, there you go. So people can go over to uh, lingscars.com and check out uh, all the about information and figure out, yeah, uh, how much profit it's making, that sort of thing. But uh, thank you to whoever shared that with me. Uh, super interesting, crazy looking website, but still appears to be a profitable biz uh, business. Um, I have to say that was a weird one. Mine's weird, but for different reasons, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely different reasons. <laughs> definitely a different reason. Um, so I've known about this site for a long time. As a matter of fact, it's a fun party trick if you're running the circles I run in, which is all the nerds. Um, I'm as as many of you might know by now, I majored in college in what basically amounts to like statistics, regressional analysis, this sort of thing. And so my website today is an ode to that. It's uh Tylerviggen.com, T Y L E R V I G E N dot com. And really it's a personal website. So if you're wondering, yeah, that's that's the guy's name. Um, the part that's caught fire, the part that's gone viral, the part that's super successful on this website is the second one down, and it's what he calls um, spurious correlations. And mm -hmm. uh, if you go over to this, it's almost a website in of itself. It says spurious correlations, and its tagline is correlation is not causation. And what he has done is embodied that by finding random, and I mean random, correlations between two things that clearly have nothing to do with each other, but correlate perfectly on a trend graph. <laughs> yep. As we can see the example on screen right now. <laughs> so you're looking at it and I, I gave you some of my favorites, Spencer, that we'll pull up, but the one on the screen yep. right now is popularity. The first name Stevie correlates directly with amazon.com stock price. And we can see <laughs> that one's plotted in black, uh, uh, color one's plotted in red color and they perfectly correlate with each other in terms of the last 10 years about 20 years actually that is so fascinating right so as soon as uh right as soon as people stop naming their child stevie you know to sell your amazon stuff exactly so if you start seeing because clearly it's causal not corollary i'm being sarcastic <laughs> clearly right. that when people stop naming their kids stevie amazon price stock price is going to start going down again yep it, <laughs> I'm going to let you share some others and okay. then I'm going to ask you, questions just, later. Just try to keep up with some of the ones yeah. as I go here. Um, I'm going to be pulling Sounds up good. as I go. Some of my favorite ones from the past year or so. Per capita consumption of margarine directly correlates with the divorce rate in Maine. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know that the divorce rate and the per capita consumption of margarine has been on the steady decline the past uh, wow. decade or so. Good, good for Maine, you know? Both the, the health of their bodies and of their relationships. Exactly. Are... And sticking with that theme, Spencer, uh, the next one I have for you is milk consumption correlates directly with the divorce rate in Colorado. That is also very interesting. Also you on know? a downward trajectory. So divorce rates in Colorado are dropping clearly because they're just not drinking as much milk. So many questions come from this, right? Like, is milk consumption dropping in all states? Uh, is the divorce rate dropping in all states, right? Uh, I mean, we are not a relationship truly... advice podcast, but I think we've no. drawn clear lines between if you're having marital problems, cutting margarine and milk out of the diet are clearly going to save your marriage. And I love below it, it has an AI explanation. Yeah. So it's clearly AI has written this with an image that, you know, is he, AI generated? He says that he added this recently. He prompts an AI explanation of the <laughs> correlation and then an AI image to go along with it so you can share it. This, the image itself <laughs> cracks me up. It's like she's happily not drinking milk by pouring it on the table. Yep. And they're clearly in a happy marriage. Like the AI, you know, did this great job of tying these two together. You can clearly <laughs> see that they're in love because she's pouring milk on the table. He's very happy about it. And so is she. <laughs> I'm giving this up AI. for you, honey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. I got two more for you that are good. Okay. The next one is. Um, bachelor's degrees in engineering 
correlates directly with energy generation in Cambodia. <laughs> so bat well, engineering uh, bachelor degrees are on the rise since 2012, and so is electricity generation in Cambodia. <sighs> Obviously. Okay. Directly correlated and directly causal. correlated. With and then my last AI. one, and by the way, there are hundreds here, and this is a good one. This has a nice sharp graph, a nice sharp uptick. Uh, and I think you'll uh, you'll like this uh, this AI graphic, but um, uh, air pollution in Sioux City, Iowa, correlates directly with Tesla's sharp increase in stock price. <laughs> and just to clarify, Tesla does not do any car production in Sioux City, Iowa. No, right? <laughs> no. And Tesla obviously would have an inverse effect on air pollution, given that they're electric cars. <laughs> you would hope so. Yeah. Uh, okay. I love the AI explanation. The smog in Sioux City created a higher demand for electric cars, leading to a spike in interest and in purchase of Tesla vehicles. As more people sought environmentally friendly transportation options, Tesla stock price soared, proving that even pollution is a way of inadvertently promoting clean energy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is this is so good. Uh, and the, uh, there's an AI academic paper even. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. There you go. It's got a whole paper, um, that is sort of academically laid out for this entire correlation. He has a whole section of the website dedicated to that. I think it's called uh, spurious scholar, if I remember correctly. Wow. And so, yeah. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> uh, a, a quick jump back to the website and maybe talk about some of the details on it. Uh, it's, it's a personal website that's gone on to become a DR 74. <laughs> so, I wow. mean, that's pretty amazing for a, um, for a, a personal website and one that, you know, is clearly built on that. <laughs> it only ranks for 2,800 keywords, mm -hmm. uh, for an estimated organic traffic of 8,200. So it's not doing much in the, um, it's not doing much with that DR 70 plus, uh, yep. website. Still very interesting. I mean, it's clearly attracted a lot of links, uh, got a high DR, and I mean, it's obviously it's a lot of fun to look at all these things. Uh, but it, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like it's really making any money from the website. So I'm glad you brought that up. Go over to okay. his uh, the homepage and scroll down to the bottom, and he's very clear about it. He says, and I quote, I don't show ads, I don't track page views, I don't load external scripts or use a copyright. I don't have anything for sale. I'm not for hire. And you can't buy me coffee. Thanks, though. Hmm. There you go. Just got to head back to the homepage there. You're on the spurious correlations. You just got to go back oh, to Tyler's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then down there at the bottom. Down at the bottom. So right there. So right here. Tyler stands okay. for no monetization, clearly. Well, there you go. He must be doing all right in his other ventures. Yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking, I mean, maybe a consulting play, um, you know, uh, certainly he's not getting a ton of traffic, so ads, maybe not, but there's a couple different things you could kind of go with there, but yeah. So that's interesting. Not, uh, really trying to make money from this project, just having a lot of fun. I'm sure he just gets a lot of just enjoyment out of publishing these, uh, sp spurious correlations. There's some uh, really good ones. If you want to really go back over it, you know, it's just, you could sit there for an hour and look at all the funny ones. Some are better than others, but some are really funny. And is this a weird niche site that you found yourself just cause you're, you know, kind of into this thing or the, the, yeah, I was on a, uh, well, Spencer, you know, it's winter time here, so I, I can still go for a run and I was on a run and something, <laughs> sorry, low blow. I was on a run and something sparked my memory about this site. And I literally pulled out my phone while running and, made myself a voice memo to to pull this in and put it on the agenda for the next podcast. So I would make sure not to forget this site. Cause I've known about this site for a while, but um, yeah, no one's sending me re year long repositories of weird niches. So I'm still out there in the wild trying to find my own. You got to do the hustle work yourself. Yeah. Well, you, you found a good one. You know, I, I do find that uh, every once in a while something triggers yeah. And I do remember a weird niche site like you just did. I, I'm sure there's still four or five somewhere in the recesses of my brain that uh, maybe, maybe I'll be able to squeeze in here over the next year uh, fit I, uh, them in with all the other suggestions. I have. I'll tease one for next week. Uh, I was watching a little bit of stand-up comedy and a stand-up comedian referenced 
a weird niche. Nice. So next week, okay. we're going to be going through that one. We'll see if anybody recognizes it from the uh, stand-up comedy Ooh, routine. Ooh, all right. Yeah, good, that a little for a tease. tease for next week. That's we're very good. We're going to tease what's next in the podcast episode, but not for next week. I think that's the first time we've done that. That's right, and that works perfectly into if you want to catch next week's episode, be sure to subscribe. Uh, you got to hit that subscribe button. Um, you know, we're here on the YouTube channel. Uh, it's a new podcast channel for the Niche Pursuits podcast, so if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. And of course, if you're listening anywhere else, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, thank you so much for listening, sticking around for the podcast. Uh, but that's it for today's news episode. We covered the spam update, the changes happening over at Google, our side projects, and of course, the weird niche sites. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Jared, thank you so much for helping out here today. Good to see you. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Just a final reminder that it was brought to you by Search Intelligence. And if you're looking for link building PR campaigns for your website, just head over to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Cheers. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening to the Niche Pursuits podcast. I just wanted to remind you that if you are ready to start building smarter, faster, and easier internal links, you should check out Link Whisper. You can get $15 off Link Whisper when you use the coupon code PODCAST at checkout. Head over to linkwhisper.com and use the code PODCAST in order to save $15. Thanks again for listening.